Welcome to this episode of Telescopic Asterisms. It's a slightly extended holiday version because I want to cover all of the asterisms that commemorate the holiday season up there in the night sky. And I say holiday season because there's dozens of different cultures all over the world at this time of year around the winter solstice that have celebrations like Christmas, like Yule, which is what I do. So that's what I wanted to cover today. And it, this is a subset of the World Asterisms Project, which is where we record cultures, sky cultures from all over the world. And it's interesting how many people from uh, those cultures put things up there for this time of year. So let's take a look. So, so far, there are 2,649 telescopic asterisms recorded in the World Asterism List. And as I said, this is a subset of that. So where do I find these holiday season asterisms in the sky? Well, first of all, there's 12 Christmas trees up there. The first one, you're looking right now at the belt of Orion, the three stars. And on the left, there is the star Alnitak. And around it is a whole lot of different nebulosity. You can see the horsehead nebula there down below but up above you see this one here which has multiple names in all kinds of different cultures it's the flame nebula it's the tank tracks it's the maple leaf it's the lips nebula it's the burning bush nebula which is my favorite name for it the ghost of all attack but astronomer donald Ware, when he was looking at this decided that this was a christmas tree so we're going to start there because it's a really easy one to find another one one of my favorites is the Christmas trees and snowflake cluster, and this is open cluster Malat 49 in the emission nebula and open cluster NGC 2264, which is the cone nebula, which you see at the bottom of this image here. And you see there is spread across it a, an open cluster, which looks like a Christmas tree. There is a small collection of stars above the cone nebula, which is the snowflake. And there is that white region up at the top, which is called the fox fur. It was given this name by American amateur astronomer and poet Leyland S. Copeland. And uh, I think it's a really good one to take a look for in the sky. So where you go for this one is between Orion, which you see in the left in this view of the sky above Seashelt, and Gemini on the other side of the Milky Way. And in between them, two of them, if you take a line from Lambda Geminorum and up from Alnitak and the belt there, it's just a little off center in between there, right there. Now, let's move a slightly over towards the west. Same sky, there's Orion again. There's the three stars of the belt we were just looking at. If you draw a line across, you can go over to that triangular formation of stars, which is the head of the constellation Taurus called the Hyades Cluster, and then you go a little bit further, you run into the Pleiades Cluster, also part of Taurus, and those are very, very commonly seen as asterisms in the sky. All over the world, people have used those. Those are at the top of the asterisms. It's parade, but today, I want to point out that the Hyades there, that triangular cluster, was called the Christmas tree by the South African astronomer Andre de la Porte. And over on the right there, you see the Pleiades. So next door, you find the candy cane, which is one of mine. Talked about it in the last episode. Right there, you also have Ali's braid in there. You see the star Alcyone and the cascade that comes down from that. It's another one we talked about last time. Now, number four is an open cluster. NGC 2516 or Caldwell 96. This is very bright, magnitude 3.8. This is in the southern sky because I want to share skies with my colleagues in the Sunshine Coast of Australia from up here in my Sunshine Coast in British Columbia. And it's South African astronomer Carol Botha who described this like a Christmas tree with lights in the tips of the branches. This is also known as the Southern Beehive. I think that's the most common name for it. And the Sprinter. So if you want this, you're looking at part of Carina here, and you see the bright star Canopus and the beta star in that constellation AV are there, and just below that line between the two of them, quite easily find this with binoculars. 
definitely with a telescope. Number five on our Christmas tree list is in Aquarius. It includes the star HIP 102042. So if you've got a go-to scope, you can go to this Christmas tree by going to that star. Also, you can find it, if you're looking between Aquarius on the left, the Aquila on the right there, go from Mu Aquari to another line from Theta Aquilae. It's about a quarter of the way between the two of them in the sky right there. Number six in our Christmas tree list is from Hungarian astronomer Santa Gabor, who comes up with all kinds of amazing asterisms. This is 97 on his list. This is 9th to 15th magnitude stars in the constellation Monoceros, right there. And if we're looking for this, there is this part of Monoceros where if you take a line from Alpha Monoceros up and Beta Monoceros down to this point here to complete that parallelogram right there about a third of the way down, that's where you're going to find this Christmas tree. Charlie Brown's Christmas tree is number seven on our list. Here it is. Here it's open cluster NGC 2367 in Canis Major. It's discovered by William Herschel back in 1785. That comic strip, Peanuts, in which you find the character Charlie Brown and his Christmas tree dates back to a premiere in 1950. So I haven't figured out who's named it yet, but it doesn't go back any further than that, obviously. You can see it upside down here with top of the tree kind of curled over with the one in the cartoon for this you go down to the constellation canis major easy to find because it's got that very bright star sirius draw a line from sirius down and from g pupus up and right there just a little off off center that's where you're going to find it now next to this you've got a snowman sharpless 2302 this is in pubis you can see that dark lane separating it into two parts there so here we are same piece of sky there's canis major again only this time we go from sirius through the star io to canis major and out about twice the distance between those two stars and that's where you're going to find the snowman there's a bent christmas tree right here this is from jeffrey quarters list he's an american amateur astronomer and he has a huge list of about five thousand asterisms and a lot of them have to do with christmas this is 478 on this list it's in the constellation perseus so there's perseus in the middle and there's the principal middle star there mirfak and here if we zoom in right next to mirfak is where the tree is but next to this there's another seasonal one and it's called the christmas goose and it's located right here basically centered on that star mirfak Number nine, another one of Jeffrey Quarters, 349 on his list. This is next door in Andromeda. Here you see it sort of laying on its side here. And for that one, you need to go from 16 per se out there at one end of constellation Perseus and down from Cassiopeia from the star Rukba, right in the middle. That's where you're going to find that Christmas tree. Number 10, also Jeffrey's list is this one. It's only about six stars, but it's a really good one. 1,059 on his list. We're back to the constellation Canis Major, but we're on the other side of it this time. We go from the star Adara, and we take a leap over from Delta Leporis and Lepus, which is underneath Orion there, and just off center, that's where you're going to find that Christmas tree. Number 11, Jeffrey again, another small tree, good one. This is in Centaurus, this is Southern Skies again. And for this one, you've got Crater, Corvus, and Hydra, the water servant up there. And then you've got Vela and all of the other constellations that used to make up uh, Argo Navis down there. And if you go from G Hydra and up from Delta Centaurus there, and then you make another line from Mu Valorum, and Mu Hydra, the where the lines cross, that's where you'll find that little tree. Finally, the Christmas tree number 12, again, southern sky, really easy to find because you're looking right now at the southern cross. Can't miss this thing in the southern sky. This is quarter 2357 on Jeffrey Quarter's list and tucked right there 
in the intersection between those major lines from those major stars, that's where you're going to find this Christmas tree. Let's zoom in. There's that intersection. There's the Christmas tree. Now, Santa Claus is up there, too. So, for example, we're going back to Hungarian astronomer Santa Gabor. This is 50 on his list. And this is in the constellation Corvus. You see it right there. So the way you do this one, there's Corvus, that four-sided uh, asterism as the IAU puts it in the sky as a constellation. And on one of, of those four sides between Ghana and Minkar, right there in the line, that's where you're going to find it straddling that line. I have a Santa Claus on my asterisms list. This is number 17 on my list. This is in the vicinity of Delphinus and Aquileus. This is what it looks like. It's a fairly large asterism. You can see it actually with the unaided eye, definitely with binoculars. This is what it looks like if you connect the dots. There you go. And if you're looking for this between Aquarius on the left and Aquila on the right, just below Aquileus and Delphinus, that region of sky you see in there, that's where you're going to find it. Santa's sleigh is a name given to NGC 6664 and Skewtum. It's also known as the teacup or the figure outline because some people see the profile of a face in that. I think Santa's sleigh is the one I'm going to go with. For this, you're going up to that roughly triangular shield-shaped asterism called Skewtum. And right by the alpha star there, that's where you're going to find it. Pretty easy to find. This is the snow globe, NGC 5466 in the constellation of Boötes. Isn't that beautiful? It's a treasure chest, this one. So here's that kite-shaped constellation Boötes with the bright star Arcturus at the bottom end. And if you take a line from Gamma Boötes up there and then up from Mufred there, not quite a straight line, but it's pretty close to center. That's where you're going to find that one. You could also draw a line down from Coma Berenice, from Beta Coma Berenice, and up from Izar. And where those cross, that'll nail it down for you in the sky. There's a snow globe, which is Planetary Nebula, NGC 6781. And this is in the constellation Aquila. So here's Aquila the Eagle. And in between Ocab and Delta Aquilae, those stars there, about a third of the way up to Ocab, that's where you're going to find it. Now, in that triangle next to it, which is Ocab, Delta Aquilae, and Altair, you'll find that next to this is a snowball, which is NGC 6804. This is a planetary nebula. So if you take a look at that triangle again, right there, not quite in the middle, but pretty close, that's where you find that one. Here's the snow sled, which is open cluster, NGC 1778 in the constellation Auriga. Here's Auriga, that oval-shaped constellation that's connected through Elnath to Taurus. And right there in, the, in that loop is where you're going to find this. There's a whole bunch of interesting stuff in there. In later episodes, we're going to cover a lot of it. Finally, I want to talk about one of my favorite asterisms, and that is the blue snowball, NGC 7,662 in Andromeda. This is an amazing one because even if you've got a low-power telescope or binoculars, you can see that it looks blue. It's quite a bright blue color. This is a, a much closer picture taken by Lukas uh, Suchka, where you can actually see the, the nature of it with a white dwarf in the middle. Really, really good one. If you want to find this one, you go from Alpha Rats, which is the star that connects Andromeda and Pegasus. And you go across from the Beta star, Beta Lacerte in the Lizard, Lacerta, and pretty much in the middle there, that's where you're going to find it. And that's our list of holiday asterisms. So check out our links in the end screen below for the World Asterisms Project and our website so we can show you other episodes. Don't forget to check like, don't forget to follow so you don't miss an episode. And we'll see you next time for Telescopic Asterisms.